Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind, none of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. All right, now let's believe God for your ears to be anointed to hear. Amen? You can be seated, man. This is going to be challenging in a good way. If you have your Bibles, go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. I'm going to read out of the NLT. And then chap and John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Now, this is very interesting. I'm going to talk about godly living obtained by the power of God. Godly living. It's something that, that, that we all strive for. It's something that we all want. It's something that, you know, we want, we want to achieve godly living. You know, I, I, I want to do right. I want to live right. I mean, I love God, but I keep bumping into this um, kind of roller coaster ride where, you know, sometimes it's working like it's supposed to work, and then sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes I'm up, and then sometimes I'm down. Maybe it's something else we need to look at, especially with this phrase, by the power of God. What does that look like? What does that look like when I decide that I'm going to, by the power of God, live right? By the power of God, do right. By the power of God, operate in the fruit of the Spirit. By the power of God. And I think the key is right there in our face. It's by the power of God. But I'm not sure if Christian people really understand that phrase, by the power of God. Now, I'm going to drop some nuggets out just, and just handle them bit by bit. I probably won't finish this sermon today. It's okay, but I want your thinking to kind of get on the same page with, 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 with what I'm going to teach here today, and I think you'll, you'll see this. It is difficult for, for, for many people to grasp fully and understand the truth that salvation from the penalty of sin, salvation from the penalty of sin is the work of God and of Him alone. Your salvation is a work of God. You being saved is all because of God all by itself. And that, that seems to be kind of a weird thing because you're like, well, I got saved. It, I thought it was me who, you know, made the decision. I thought, I, in, 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 in essence, you're like, I thought I got myself saved by the decisions I made. Now, you had to believe, absolutely. Look at this in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Many people can't grasp this fully, that the truth, that salvation from the penalty of sin is a work of God and of Him alone. Verse 8 says, God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for it because it was a gift from God. God saved you by His grace when you believed, all right? His part was, by His grace, He did the work and saved you your part, our part, is we believed. Now, that's a huge part, but we keep adding on to our part. Our part is believe. His part is everything else. <laughs> our part is none of his part. Uh, look, at the, look at John chapter 6, verse 28 through 29 in NLT. I, I, thought, it, I thought it was necessary to just, just show you this as we got started today. There was a group of guys that saw Jesus feeding, uh, the, uh, uh, feeding some folks who, by multiplying bread and fish, and they wanted to do the works of God. And um, verse 28 said, and they replied, we want to perform God's works. And I think that's how the church is. They want to perform God's work. 
we want to accept responsibility and do what God is actually responsible for, okay? We want to perform God's works too. What should we do? And here's what Jesus said. Jesus told them, this is the only work, the only work God wants from you. Here's the only work. Believe in the one he has sent. So the only work that we have under this New Testament is to believe. That's the work. And somehow that's so hard for the Christians to kind of accept. It's like, all right, I believed, and, 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 and look at me now. I'm, I'm, I'm doing better. But that's, it's not because of you that you're doing better. You believed, and God worked all of that stuff that you see in. Does everybody follow me so far? Now, all that God does in, in reconciling everything that God does, in redeeming us, everything that God does, in justifying us, in, in giving us a new eternal life, all of that is of God alone. God by himself is responsible for reconciling. God by himself is responsible for redeeming. He's, he's responsible for justifying us and making us righteous. He's responsible for us to have a new eternal life. God alone and God by himself is responsible for that. Man can contribute nothing to reconciliation, redemption, justification, and new eternal life. God by himself. Now, as difficult as this is for man to see, it seems even more difficult for the saved, for saved people to realize that the life which God expects for us to live is not of us, but by his own power. God expects for us to live this life as Christians, and we think that we're the one that's going to produce this life that he expects. All my life, I thought it was my responsibility to produce this life that God expects for me as a Christian to have. And now I'm telling you today that it is not me that should be responsible, nor can I produce what's necessary to live this Christian life. This Christian life, the life that God expects for me to live, the life that God expects for you to live, this Christian life is by his own power. So he's, he's expecting for me to live a certain way, and it's going to be by his power that that comes to pass. Are y'all are are with me? You still on the bus? Okay, so this, this really blew my mind. He's expecting for God, God's expecting for me to, to live this way. He's expecting for me to, to, to live righteous, to live holy, to live. He's expecting for me to live this way, but he's not expecting for me to produce that way of living. He, by his own power, is going to produce the expected life that he expects for us to live. God, dog, I, maybe it didn't do you like it did me, but it was like, it was like a pause moment right there. I said, I got to hold up here because maybe I'm a little bit too high strong, but I thought that was my responsibility. Now, hold on to this. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to just kind of drop this bit by bit, and then it'll all come together now. So because of this lack of understanding, many believers, listen to this word I'm about to use, strive, a striving, Self-effort. Many believers strive in their own strength for, a high, for this high moral conduct of living instead of yielding. Strive to try to get it to happen rather than yielding themselves to the power of God, which will enable them to live according to that high standard of living that's under the grace of God. And so basically what we've been doing is we've been working hard and striving hard to produce this way of living that'll be pleasing to God. And he says, no, I don't want you striving. I want you yielding. I want you yielding to the power of God. And through the power of God, that way of living will be produced by him, not you. Your job is to believe. His job is to do the work. You'll get it. I promise you'll get it. I'm on, I'm on, I got, 
I got three pages of me emphasizing and overemphasizing the same thing. <laughs> Say this out loud with me, striving, striving. Versus, yielding. versus yielding. Now, you know, when you yield in a car, you pause and let the car go ahead of you, and then you follow. Same thing with God. Rather than you striving, going ahead of God, trying to produce this expected way of living, he says, yield to the power of God. Yield to the power of God. Don't, don't yield to the power of self. Yield to the power of God. See, if you could yield to the power of self, then you, 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 didn't, necessarily, you didn't necessarily have to get saved. You, you, you're saying to yourself, I can produce this way of living. Well, why'd you get saved? Because all hell broke loose and you couldn't figure out nothing. You didn't know how to, every time, every time you tried it, it didn't work, it got worse, it got, and then you finally said, well, somebody said, you need to save him. Then, and then you, you, you got saved and, and, and he came and he saved you and you really thought that you had a lot to do with getting saved, but he had that thing worked out the whole time. He knew what it was going to take to bring you to that spot where you said, I need a savior. Then he said, I'm going to go ahead and save you. He said, now, if I can go ahead and save you, I'm going to go ahead and produce the life I expect for you to live. I ain't asking you to do nothing but to believe in the Old Testament you work for me, but in the New Testament I work for you. <laughs> Are you following me now? Are you following me? Uh, so, when this high standard of living under grace, when it's seen to be on this divine, when you, when you look at this, this, this way of this expectation of living, this high standard of living that's under the grace of God, it becomes, and then you, you, you compare it to like, I'm living in a crazy world. I got temptation in my face all day. I got, and I thought about this this morning when I was praying. Our, our minds are so busy and occupied and uh, fluttered. And it's like it just keeps coming. You wake up, something's going on. You turn the television on, something's going on. You, you go to the store, something's going on. And, and something's going on with your family. And, it's like Satan is working overtime to just keep you distracted. And you're not even recognizing that to live this life that he's talking about, it's, it's going to be something more than human resources that's needed to live this life. After you've, you've lived a little while and then you recognize, I have done this over and over and over again and still it's not working, you know, I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to make the right decisions. I'm trying to stay away from uh, the, the, those habits that you had that you just couldn't seem to break. You prayed and you prayed, but it, 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 it kept seeming like it was just too late, and so you turned it over to Jesus, and then you stopped worrying about it. You gave it over to the Lord, and he worked it out. That's a song, but you weren't paying no attention to it because you were so occupied. We, the, the answers tried to, they tried to sing the answer to you and everything, but, but we were so occupied. And somehow religion told you, you're responsible for all of this. And if you really look at what God's asking for, it is impossible for you to be a Christian in your own human resources. Amen. What you're asking me to do, I can't do that in my own re resources. I never forget when there was a relative of ours who was found murdered. And she's like, oh, well, just go ahead and forgive them. Do not tell me that. I am not ready to forgive somebody that killed somebody that had my blood. I, I'm not ready for that. You, you never will be on your own. I don't have the human resources to, to, to dish out that type of forgiveness. Where well, the Bible says we ought to love. I know what the Bible says, but my, I don't have the human resources to love like you telling me the Bible says I ought to love. But we pretend like we do. We act like we do. 
only to fail in private enough where we don't want to come in public where the church people believe all of this stuff, but we really don't. That's our big secret. Our big secret is we really don't believe God the way you heard us say that we believe God. And when it gets worse, I just stay away from you people who say you believe God like that because I ain't figured it out yet. What I have discovered is that I don't have human resources to live the way the Bible telling me to live. <laughs> oh, y'all looking at me go, I lost my mind. Sometimes I feel like, oh my God, they don't know what I'm talking about. I don't went too deep. I don't got off there. No, no, no. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You get up here and act like you're the greatest parents in the whole world, and you preach that stuff like you actually have the human resources to parent like God tells you to parent, and then we, all the rest of us done thought, well, what the, what the world wrong with us? I don't have human resources to parent the way the Bible says. I don't have the human resources to be a husband like the Bible tells me to. I don't have the human resources to be the pastor like the Bible tells me to. But he didn't ask me to have the resources. That's why he, by his power, Divine power alone can produce this divine order of living that he is expecting. He's able. But are we yielded or are we striving? Under grace, we got to yield to the power. Under religion, we think we got the power. And your human resources without God's divine power will not produce this divine life. And all we do is just, we go keep a list of, well, he did that wrong, I did that right. Self-righteousness, he did that wrong, I did that right. Oh, they got, they got been divorced twice, I'm still with my wife. And you brag about that. I, I, I ain't never messed up since I've been married for 30 years. First of all, you lie. Let her, let's see what she got to say about you. Okay. You don't have the... <laughs> I thought I had the power to heal myself. I thought my intellect and my knowledge and my studies was enough. And I discovered I needed his divine power to produce the promise of healing. His divine power to give me peace that passes all understanding. His divine power to pay the rent when all my money is spent and a little bit to buy some food and the baby need to pass shoes. That's another song. You won't listen to that one. Look, you got a light bill due. You even got a gas bill too. Telephone disconnect. Wait till your next paycheck. Paycheck bounce on you. What are you going to do? Cheat and scam somebody to get the money to do that? That's in your human resources. But there is a power of God that can get you all, get you through all that because that's a part of living. And so we keep trying to teach principles mm, without no Holy Ghost. Because you think you have the equipping and the resources to do it. But honey, just in case you don't know it now, you gonna need the power of God. You can't do it without it. Now, the fact that the true life under grace, the fact of the true life, the, somebody says, I live my life under the grace of God. So what you're saying is, I live my life in complete dependence upon God. Because that's, that's what it is to live your life under the grace of God. <laughs> There's still people who think that under the grace of God, that allows for loose living. It doesn't. The grace of God 
is responsible for the highest level of character. It teaches you how to live a high level of character. But what religion did is took the grace of God and says, it, allow, it allows you loopholes. It allows you to just, uh, you know, to live a, a loose life. Now, if you're really living under the grace of God, you're living a life of complete dependence upon God. And the more you depend upon God, the more you're going to see his unrestrained operation of love in your life. So really, all of our lives, here is the main subject. And you've heard me teach this subject for like, what, uh, at least two years. Depend on God. Depend on God. Depend on God. Learn how to depend on God. Declare your dependence upon God. Depend on God. Learn how to depend on God. What it looks like to depend on God. That's it. Complete dependence upon God is evidence that that life must be lived by the power of God. Our lives must be lived by the power of God. That's why we got to depend on Him. I depend on Him because my life has got to be lived by the power of God. If I, if I don't live my life by the power of God, I won't ever achieve. If that life could be lived in the power of the believer, it would become a life of dependence upon self and not a life of dependence upon God. If I could successfully live this expected life that God has for me to live, and it doesn't change. It's not like God's, it, it, this, the attitude of, well, God's lower his standards because yours are low. No. His standards are, are high and they will always be high. And he's not lowering them because society changed. Well, you know, times changed, so God's lowered his standard. No, he hadn't. He hadn't lowered his standards. It's, it's, it's never lowered. It's never been adjusted to society or to you or what you think it is now. No, it just requires what is always required, dependence on him. It's always required dependence on him. Well, you know, God loved. Yeah, God, but see, God loved you while you was a sinner. Don't be talking about God love to justify sin. God loves and has always loved, can't do none but love because his nature is love. He knows we're nothing but dirt or dust. We're dirty, we're dust. He knows that. So I said to me, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a dirty vessel. Ain't no other kind of vessel to dwell in. There's no, there's no other kind of vessel to dwell in. Now, you, 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 you know, your vessel might not be as dirty as somebody's vessel, but we, we ain't got no Ajax sparkling clean vessels for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. He dwell in there because there's something dirty that needs. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you the picture. It requires dependence upon him. I'm, I'm trying to really, just really try to get you this, and I know I'm screaming and hollering, and my head almost hurting because I'm hollering all this screaming and stuff, and I'm just, I'm trying to get you to see that this Christian life cannot be successfully lived under grace without depending on the power of God. It's not about depending on you. It's not, a, you know, well, you're smart and you've gone to college and you got enough D's behind your name to whistle Dixie. It's not about you. Because eventually, you'll begin to see it's seasonal when it's self-dependence. One day you're doing good, and just all of a sudden, something changed and you're down. One day you're filthy rich and something changed and you're broke. One day you're extremely healthy and something changed and you're in the hospital. But God's talking about, let's just do this relationship just like this. And then whatever comes in your life is so I can take you higher and higher so when Jesus comes back, you're going to be ready like I promised you. You, you follow what I'm saying? Even, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't have. I don't even have the vernacular. I, I don't have the utterance to preach what I'm preaching now. I depend on God. I got up at 3:30 this morning talking to God about how to say this. 
I know what I'm, what I'm preaching on. I got, I got it written down what I'm preaching on. But I, you, you know, Paul used to always ask people to pray that he has the utterance. Okay, you still on the bus? All right, let's, let's move a little, 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 little deeper here. So, it would become a life of dependence upon self and not a life of dependence upon God if we start living as if we could do it without God, the, God's power. Now, in, in the teachings of grace, and, and now this is going to be even more shocking because now I'm going to go in the Bible and show you what, what I just said. In the teachings of grace, great emphasis is placed upon the fact that it is God who works. It is God who works. It's hard for believers to receive that because we, we always want to do something so we can brag about it, but he says, no, God did this, and this was a gift, and you can't boast about it, and, and, and saved people have a hard time with that because religion always requires you to do something. All right, now watch this. Let's look at the Scriptures. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. You need God. All right, now watch this. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Who's working in you? What is he doing? So God's working in you. Who's working? He's working in you. He's working on your desires. And he says, I'm going to give you a desire to want to do what pleases me. God's going to give you the desire to please him. God's working in you so you'll have a desire to please him. I always thought that was up to me. I always thought that was my job. My job is to work real hard so I can want to please God. And here it's like God said he's working in you so you'll want to please him. So pleasing God is a work of God and not a work of us. But that's a big deal. You're trusting God to give you the desire to please him. Oh, and yes, he's working. So God's doing the work. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. Hebrews 13, verse 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. Stop right there. He will equip you with all you need for doing his will. Now, notice he says he'll give you the desire to do his will, to please him. Here he says he will equip you with all you need to do his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. He says he's going to produce in you every good thing that pleases him. All glory to him forever and ever. He is going to produce in you every good thing that pleases him. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. <laughs> now, notice in both of these so far, he's equipping you for his will, not yours. That might be the problem. We so focus on what we want to do, we, we're not really focused on what he wants to do. And he says, I'm equipping you for my will. I know the plan for you. He said it's a good plan. 
and I'm going to equip you for the plan I got for you. I'm going to equip you to do my will. I'm going to put everything and produce everything in you. I'm going to produce in you every good thing that is pleasing to him. I'm going to produce in you love. I'm going to produce in you joy. I'm going to produce in you everything that pleases him. I, it is the fruit of this spirit. It is not your fruit. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and he will produce everything, every good thing that's pleasing to him. I got to believe that. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to start believing that. But we keep searching for the steps to do what he said he'd do. You keep looking for the steps. No. Look at this, 1 Corinthians 3, 7. Now, I'm setting you up for one big comment because some of you are thinking, well, well what, what do you do? Well, I already showed you one thing you do. You believe. Now watch this. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is God makes the seed grow. Who makes the seed grow? No, we do. No, we do. Okay, no, you do. No, 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 God does. God does. Not the one who waters, not the one who plants. So here's what we say it. Well, God can't bring the increase if you don't water and plant. That ain't what, that ain't that. No, no, no. God, God can bring the increase is in spite of whether you water the planet. You keep thinking that your actions hinder God, or you keep thinking that the power of God is based on your performance. The power of God is not based on your performance, honey. Your performance is based on the power of God, the, the right one. But religion's got us always backwards, dude. God makes the seed grow. And every time you see seed, you think about money. He's not talking about no money. He's talking about planting and watering in the lives of other people, and he's the one that's going to cause it to be results, the results to come. <laughs> come on, let's look, at, uh, let's look at one more, and I'll continue here. 1 Corinthians 12, 6. 1 Corinthians 12 and 6. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. Amen. Who does the work? He just works in the preachers. He works in all of us. He works in all of us. That's going to require you to believe it. It sounds like a small thing, except there's something lurking around on the inside of us called self-dependence. And we've cultivated that a lot more than we've cultivated, cultivated God dependence. God's working in us. So, but I can't tell he, he worked me. Just keep believing him. Keep believing him. Every time you do something stupid, just remind yourself, God's working in me. I'm going to be all right. God's working in me. Oh, man, that was dumb. But God's working in me. I'm going to be all right. Declare out loud, I'm the righteousness of God. Not you say it now, I'm just saying, in that moment, you declare the right, I'm the righteousness of God. You just keep your belief right there. I still believe it. I still believe I'm righteous. I still believe I'm redeemed. I still believe that I'm going to do what pleases God. I still believe I can live this Christian life. I still believe it. God's working in me. God's working in me. We think... God's only involved when there's nothing, when there's no pressure in our life, when there's nothing going on wrong, then hey, that's God. You know how extremely concerned I would be if there was no pressure in my life? You're going to one day learn to appreciate the trials that come in your life because that's what gets rid of that self-dependence. 
And the quicker you accept by the power of God, the better it's going to start being with you. But the more you keep insisting that you can do without him, his love is so great. And he's like, I, uh, I'm not going to let go of this. I am going to do what I got to do to produce the life in you. And some of you can't hear God give you instructions because you're so cluttered. You're so distracted with everything else that's going on that you can't even hear God. It's not like he's not speaking. You can't hear him because you've got so much clutter in your, in, your, in your soul. You can't hear him. He's telling you what to do to get that promotion. You couldn't hear it. He's telling you what to do so you won't get cancer. You couldn't hear it. He's telling you what to do so you can keep your marriage. You couldn't hear it. Clutter, 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 more clutter. And then when God don't do exactly what you want him to do, now you're mad at him, and now you definitely can't hear him because you're mad at the only one who can help you. Clutter, clutter. This is real. Look at what's happening in the world, and you ain't seen nothing yet. I said this to Taffy yesterday. I said, the time has come for people who just continue their own way and not listen to what God's trying to do with them they're now going to see the manifestation of that. And, and it won't be God that did it. It's like, I've been trying to get your attention, and you just keep on going like I ain't saying nothing. A due season is, is at hand. And it's, st it's still going to be God doing it for your, your good for your good. Help you not to kill yourself. Help you not to destroy yourself. And I'm saying, wake up, church. Listen. Trust him. He's got you. Pay attention. No, 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 no. I'm just going to keep doing what, what um, social media tells me to do. I'm, I'm going to keep doing. I'm, no, no. You know, I got 500 friends, and they disagree with you, Pastor. Oh, my God. You, they don't know you. You don't know them. What's the matter with you? They don't care nothing about you. I don't even know why you call them friends. They're not your friend. Did we read 1 Corinthians? Yeah, God does the work. So God is doing the work. Now watch this. I thought this was really interesting. Now to show that the power, show that the power of life under grace is of God, that, that this power to live the life that God expects, it is of God. There are these three scriptures I want to show you that emphasize the weakness of man, so you can see the power of God. So let me show you just what we got, who we are. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and 7. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and 7 in NLT. Uh, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars. We are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. So we're like fragile jars containing this great power in our vessels. So it's obvious, since we don't even have the strength to really carry this great treasure, that the power is of God and not of us. The power for living this godly life 
is of God and not of us. I, I like the way the King James read that too. Look, look at verse 7 in King James. It, it, it's, it's, it's his sufficiency. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and the power is not of us. The power is of God. The power is not of us. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. I want you walking out of here today with this, this mindset. I need you, God. <laughs> today, I stop trying to do stuff depending on me. All right, you made the promise. It's, it's on you. It's on you. Now, look at this. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in our lives, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead who delivered us from so great of death and thus deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He said, y'all don't know what we've been through. Many times we were at the point of death. He says, but we decided we were going to trust God. We were going to trust the one who had power over death. And by depending on him, we were able to be delivered out of this thing. See, before death takes you, I want you to trust the God who has power over death. Before poverty takes you, I want you to trust the God that has power over poverty. Y'all know it's true, but right now, these days and time, man, you got to pray before you walk out the house. There are people who walked out the house and didn't come back home. There are kids that went to college to try to get their life started and then come back home. There are folks who ran to the grocery store to get a loaf of bread and didn't come back home. There are folks who went out to spend a day in the park and didn't come back home. There are folks who went to visit another country and didn't come back home. I'm saying before you leave home, trust in the God that is able to watch over you when you leave and give you traveling mercies and bring you all the way back home again. And you won't be able to brag about it was just you that did it. It was God watching over you, hallelujah. You have a God that can watch over you in the middle of every chaotic thing that's happening in this world. It shall not come near you because he's watching over you. I'm Psalms 91 equipped. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God in whom I trust. Hallelujah. A thousand shall fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. For with long life am I satisfied, and he will show me great salvation. I got to trust God. I can't trust the popo no more. They ain't never there when you need them. They come and wrap up stuff when it's over. You would like for them to be there when they come through the door, but, but you need God. Nobody called 911. They don't know what's going on right now, but God does. Hallelujah. And he's already commanded angels to watch over you lest you dash your foot against the stone. God knows how to take care of you. But there's a generation of people that don't believe it. They don't believe that God can take care of you. They don't believe that God can watch over you. They keep pulling up something that didn't happen and why God didn't do that and why God let that happen. Don't nobody know all the answers? Get saved and ask him when you sin. 
you will find out that he had your greater good in sight. You, you would, you would want to think that, yeah, of course, Pastor, everybody believes that. No, they don't. They are choosing to worship the devil more than they worship God. I'm not willing to, to take that risk. God, I trust you. I trust you. I, I need you. I trust you. I depend on you. Well, you're just being religious. No, I quit religion. I, I, I believe in God. I trust God. I depend on God. And he's not going to let me down. If I, listen, if, if you've depend, if I've, I've, I've been dependent on God now going on 42 years, I'm not going to stop depending on God. God has been my refuge. God has been my fortress. God has been my peace. God has been my deliverer. Lately, God's been my healer. Hallelujah, God. God is the one that can lift you up. God is the one that can protect you. God is the one that can speak peace to you. And I just decided that if you were coming to church today, you're going to hear about God. <laughs> you're going to hear about a Jesus who died for you. You're going to hear about a Savior who showed up and rescued you. He is not going to give up on you. I don't care what you decide to do. You can cuss him and send him to hell. He ain't going to give up on you. He's going to stay with you. He's not going to leave you. He's going to be locked in on you. He will never forsake you, and he will save you. He will protect you. He will be your God. I'm going to stick with him. I mean, what else are you going to do? I, I don't know what, is, what else to do. Dog, you can't even drive your car. You drive your car you got ready to dump just in case something happens. <laughs> you, you waved to somebody. He, he thought you shot him a bird. Now he got a gun. He pulled it out. Now you, you driving like this. <laughs> Well, that ain't going nowhere. What you going to do? What you going to do when you, you thought it was really the company that called you, but it was a scam? What do you do? You worked hard to pay your house off, and somebody got a quick claim deed and went in and, and stole your identity, and they're borrowing off your paid-off house. What do you do? What do you do every time something come up, somebody else come up with a scam to try to take it? That's where you're living. And you put all your codes in it. You change all your codes. Now you're paranoid. And, and now you're changing your bank account every three months now because it just, you know, that ain't me. Who would that? I ain't got time for that. That's crazy. You lose sleep over that kind of stuff. That's good. Am I going to wake up tomorrow broke? Oh, no, the bank done closed up. Well, you know, they said get your money out the bank and stick it in a pillowcase somewhere. What you, what you going to do? You, you got fear everywhere. You got fright. You got all this stuff going on. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust in the only one that's able to take care of me. I'm sticking with God, man. Look at Romans 6 and 13. The, the counsel that Paul gives here in Romans 6, 13 shows that the power is of God and not of man. But he, he looks at this word instrument. For the instrument is powerless apart from the master's control. Look what he says here in verse 13. Neither yield your, ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members yield them as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, notice he says we're instruments. How many of you know that a horn cannot play itself? A drum cannot beat itself. A scaffold by itself can't do an operation. A harp can't play itself. It's an instrument. You have to yield that instrument to somebody to be able to play it. And this is what he is saying. You're going to have to yield yourself 
as an instrument yields to somebody to play it. An instrument is just there. Somebody's got to pick it up and play it. I want to be an instrument not for the devil to pick me up and play. I want to be an instrument for God to pick me up to play. I want God to play me as a harp. I want God to play, to, to, to deal with me as an instrument. And so what we've got to see is that it's important for us to understand that we are powerless as instruments apart from the master's control. I'm powerless as an instrument. I want the master to control me as an instrument. So now right here, this makes it important to distinguish between trying to serve God and being used of God. Are you still trying to serve God or are you being used of God? See, religion's taught all of us, serve God. And I, and I hear what they're saying, I understand. But I'm asking you to reconsider. Desire to be used of God. See, you have to try to serve God. You only have to yield to be used of God. I said you have to try. You have to strive to serve God, but you have to yield to be used of God. And I don't know about you, but I want to be used of God. I want to yield so I can be used of God. I want God to blow me as his trumpet. God doesn't desire, this is a strong, this is strong. God doesn't desire hmm, to help believers do things for him. Oh, God, help me to serve you. Help me to do something for you. Help me. To, well, that's a prayer we've been praying on. God doesn't desire to help believers do things for him. He desires to do the work himself through them. We keep praying, oh, God, I'm praying, help me do the things for you, Lord. Help me to do the things for you, God. Oh, help me to do the things for you. And God is saying, no, 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 no. I want you to let me work through you. He desires to do the work himself through you. I said, all right, I got that, Lord. Work through me. I pray you ought to pray every day. Work through me today. Oh, not, oh, God, work with me <laughs> to do something for you. Uh-uh. I can do all of it. I just need an instrument. Will you be my instrument Will you yield yourself as an instrument for me to work through you? How many of you are ready for God to work through you? Hallelujah. Through you. God wants to work through you. His desire is to do it through you. Oh, God, help me to do things for you, Lord. I get it. I get it. I get it what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Lord, help me to do things. I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you a new way to, a, a new utterance. Yeah. Help me. God, work through me. Now you can see how we're so busy trying to get God to do something for us. He's like, I got you. Let me work through you. Let me work through you today. Can I work through you? I need instruments. The ministry of Jesus is not over. I need instruments. Yes, Will you yield your life as an instrument for me to work through you? Oh, God, work with me so I can do something for you. Listen at us. You're, you're talking about the God in heaven that does not need you but decided if you would allow him to work through you if you yield yourself as instruments. Yield yourselves instruments. 
So as you can tell from this pulpit, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching relationship. I want you to have a relationship with God. I don't want to tell you some little goody goody feel good things so you can walk out here and say, oh, I know how to get rich by tomorrow. Thank God for these five steps. I'm going to use them right away. Where's Jesus? Where's the relationship with him? Do you know him? My goodness, when I stand before God, I do not want to stand before God as a preacher who failed God's sheep. It's not about us, y'all. It's all about him. All about him. God worked through me. Say that, God worked through me. Say it again, God worked through me. Say it one more time, God worked through me. So here's what I'm saying here. Grace is that which God does, and he alone does it. And this true life under grace has all of its sources in him. Grace is God's part. Believing is our part. So it follows then that whenever there is a lack of success in the life of a saved person, it might be due to the dependence upon self instead of dependent upon God. I am no longer sitting around waiting for something to hit the mailbox. I just want to keep living. And in my living, God uses me. How is God going to use you this week? Oh, in some wonderful ways if you just yield yourself to him. You, 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 you're not responsible for making God do something with you. You can't make God do nothing. All you can do is say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Use me. And it might not be that day when you pray that prayer. And it might not be that week when you pray that prayer. But God will look at you and he'll say, you know what, I can use you. I need to take you through a little quick training right quick and see if you're going to stay or you're going to quit time we get started. Wow. I, I didn't think this little thing was going to happen with the church where great numbers of people would just leave the church, and it happened. It happened. These are people who loved God with everything, so they said. But when you don't have a relationship with God, that's going to be seen, that it really wasn't about him. It was all about you. I am in it so I can get something from God. I want God to do something for me. And God was like saying, no, actually, I want you to do something for me. I got you taken care of. I've already done something for you. I'm just trying to get you to see what I've already done for you. Wow. And the more and more I dig into this life of grace, the more I see how ignorant we have been in church as we created these weird religious things, these weird ways of believing that serve to move us from a authentic relationship with God. He wants to use you, and he will. I declare it over every person at the sound of my voice that you are now an instrument meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work, that in God using you, your family will be changed. People you know will be changed, and you will be changed. He's working in you. He's working in you, praise God. Now, none of this means that the believer should be relieved of his responsibility for his life. But that responsibility is now to yield to the control of God. You 
hear me saying, oh, you know, trust in God, depend on God, do that. That doesn't mean right, you're, you're, you're all relieved of your response, your responsibility, root word there, response. You're still supposed to, you, you're still going to have to respond to all the issues of life. You're going to have to respond to bills being, need to be paid. You got to respond to being, how you treat it. You got, you, you, you still have a responsibility in living. None of this means go home, cop a squat, get a Coke and a smile, and lean back and watch Netflix all day. That, none of this means that. You're, you still have a responsibility for life. But that responsibility now should change to this. I am now responsible with everything that confronts me in life to yield to the power of God. I now accept the responsibility. Since I am responsible, I am now going to be responsible for yielding to the power of God. I am now going to be responsible for depending on God. I am now going to be responsible for trusting God. Your responsibility has been a sum total of something happens, you get worried, you get stressed, and then you go into self-preservation where you're trying to figure out how to work it yourself. There's no talking to God, no believing God for wisdom, no trusting God. It's just, all right, I'm going to apply everything that I know only to get to a point sometime in your life where you realize you don't know enough. So you're still responsible. God's not going to put you in a choke hole and, 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 and force it down your throat. That's why it's called yielding. And you know what it means when you yield something? It's something you decided you want to happen. Lord, you go and I'm following you. And the two great prayers you'll find yourself praying, number one, God show me how to yield to you. Number two, let your will be done. Those are the two, the two prayers. Lord, let your will be done and show me how to yield to you, and I'm all out of time. Good Lord, that went by quick. Uh, did y'all get anything out of that? Did that did... All right, real quickly, just bow your heads. Close your eyes with me just for a moment. Hmm. I don't know exactly what the Holy Spirit said to you. I was speaking, but I believe as I was speaking, he was saying stuff to you. I, I, I was teaching, and as I was teaching, he was saying some stuff to you. I, I believe that some stuff can get started today. If you're here, and you are, because I see you, <laughs> but you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you can now yield and say, Lord, I, I yield to you. I, I thought I had this life figured out, but I need a Savior. I need a Savior so bad. I smile in public. I make everything look like it's cool. But on the inside, I feel like I want to die every day. Help me, Lord. He says, I'll be a very present help in a time of trouble. But I want to give each of you the opportunity, if you have not taken it already, that if you've not made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, if you have never been born again, if you've never experienced allowing him to come in and save you by his grace, believe it today. Give your heart to him and let him come in and save your life. That's the first thing. Secondly, we're, we've come out of out of an awful time in our nation and in the world. Not everybody made it back to church. We did lots of home goings through that thing. 
I haven't even probably processed what I need to process from all of the people that went home to be with the Lord. I'm glad that they went home to be with the Lord, but maybe something happened with you and you kind of disconnected. You're born again, but you're just kind of disconnected from God. You were kind of numb. And you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord. You want to recommit yourself to God. I want to give you that opportunity to do that today. Thirdly, if you've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it's available. And last but not least, maybe God's calling you to join this church today, World Changes Church International. I want to pastor you. Tap in, I want to be there to pastor you and to watch over your soul. But all four of these things require a decision, a response. And nobody but you can do that. I ask the Holy Spirit to have his way in you today. So now, I open this altar up. Any of those four things I just mentioned you want to respond to, be bold today. Be strong. Don't consider what others will say or anything. Just move. Get down here to this altar, man. Let's believe together. Let's pray together. Let's hope together. Let's believe that the best is yet to come. Let's believe that it's not over yet. It's not done yet. God's not through with you yet. He's not finished with you yet. He's not done with you yet. Don't believe that lie of the devil, that it's over, that you've messed up so many times that God's just, no, 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 honey. He's got mercies that are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. All you got to do is just make your mind up, man. I'm, I'm going with God, man. I'm going with God. I am not going to allow my life to be sifted away by the troubles of this world. I'm going with God. And I'm going to live for God, and I'm going to let God use me, and I'm going to let God work through me, and I might not be able to see the end of this thing right now, but one day I will see the conclusion of the matter. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, is there anybody else? It's just well, you're one decision away. You're one decision away. Don't, don't walk out of here having not made that decision. You're one decision away. Let God arise and the enemies be scattered. Let faith arise and the enemies be scattered. You can do this thing, man. You can do it. And um, here's one thing I believe. If you don't do it today, God's working on you. <laughs> He loves you, man. He loves you. He's not going to give up on you. Amen. He will never give up on you. And you're going to find yourself one day saying the same thing. God, I'm never going to give up on you. I'm never going to give up on you. Okay? Amen. Well, we'll finish that next week, but, ooh. <laughs> you know, that's a lot, lot to think about, right? A lot to think about. Yeah. 
A lot to think about, a lot to look at. I'm sure you took some great notes and you, you know, listen to the sermon over again and just say, all right, God, you know, let, let me see this. And let's just, keep, let's just keep digging. Let's see how deep this is, how wide it is, how high it is. Let's not just be satisfied with the cheaper. Let's go with the deeper. Let's look at everything we think we know and look at it again and then look at the word and say, now, wait a minute. Does that really mean what I thought it meant? Let's trust God to take us on this journey. Father, we thank you right now for those who've come to this altar. I pray that every burden be removed and every yoke be destroyed in their lives. I pray, Lord, that there's this wonderful plan that you have for each of them, a plan to succeed, a plan that is good. And Father, I thank you that it will come to pass in their lives. Satan, I rebuke you. You take your hands off them. And I thank you that God is on the move in their lives. And I declare grace, grace to every mountain in their life and that that mountain be reduced to a small little nothing. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. Congregation, don't you appreciate those who've come down to this altar? That we're going to be praying for them and we're going to be get in there with them, praise the Lord. At this time, if you'll turn this way and follow this gentleman to the prayer room, they're going to take you and minister to you and give you biblical understanding of how to obtain and how to maintain what you came to receive. We thank God that you're never going to be the same again. Never going to be the same again. Praise the Lord. Well, let's stand up for our final blessing. Let me get you out of here. Remember, if you have not registered for the women's conference, uh, go ahead and do that uh, before you leave today. And uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time to come to uh, church today. And, and we're just, we're just, we're just, I just, I'm just loving it. Amen. And I, let's agree that you're going to have an amazing week this week and that God's going to speak to you and you're going to hear some things that you've never heard before. Amen. And now may the grace of God be upon you all. I plead the blood of Jesus over your household, over your lives. And I declare that the angels of God watch over you. I declare divine protection right now. And I thank God that no matter what the need is, that he is your supply house. I declare in the name of Jesus that you walk in favor after favor after favor, grace after grace after grace, that the blessings upon your children that the blessing is upon your marriage, the blessing is upon your home, the blessing is upon your job, that insight, revelation, witty inventions and ideas be released unto you now. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have an amazing day, an amazing week. What if we could take every groundbreaking message on grace, all the life-changing sessions from conferences, and every radical interview with the stars and those with inspirational stories that moved us, and share them with you 24 hours a day? Now we can. This is our network. It can all be found here. Changing Your World Network. Streaming hope, grace, and the wisdom of God with simplicity and understanding. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for free. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries app on your smart TV and streaming devices. Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Begin Streaming. Changing Your World 24-hour network through the app today. Visit cywn.tv for more information now.
Yeah.